Do you have the perfect elevator pitch? Do you, can you introduce your business in 60 seconds or less? That's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, here's the show. Welcome to More Than A Few Words, marketing conversation for business owners. And DFW is part of the Digital Toolbox. And this is your host, Lorraine Ball. You know, there are lots of times in our lives when we have only a minute or two to create a perfect first impression. And when those opportunities come along, you have to be prepared. And so I could not think of a better person to have a conversation about elevator pitches and first impressions than Mike Barrett. He is the principal of Barrett and Associates, and he is really focused on helping solve common challenges that plague growing businesses. Mike, welcome to the show. Lorraine, thank you for having me. This is very exciting and I'm excited to, uh, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> well, I'm happy to have you here. And I have to say, because this is something that I, I talk to business owners about a lot, is that we met initially in an online business networking group and would never be having this conversation if it hadn't been for the fact that we made positive first impressions on each other in that setting. I could not agree more. I think even if you back it up a little bit, the fact that everybody got struck by this massive storm of sickness or or whatever on the same day and were able to adapt to it as quickly as we did and be able to carry on with business over video, over phone, but really seeing this work from home vision actually broadened the connections that we have. It used to be in person and you saw the same 20 people. And now here you and I are, you're in Indiana and I'm in Rhode Island and we are connected. We just met a couple of weeks ago. So I think uh, not only the first impression, but just the technology that got us here is really, really cool. Absolutely. Let's kind of dive into that because whether I'm meeting people face to face or pitching my idea in a Zoom call, it really all boils down to that elevator pitch. So why don't you start maybe by defining for my audience how you see an elevator pitch? Sure. Um, I would love to speak to it very quickly through example. So I have a simple adage, you need to be first, best, or different and to stand out. And uh, I think the challenge with small businesses is obviously they aren't the first small business they in their category. They may be the best, but by definition, they're a small business, so we don't know yet. But they always have the opportunity to be different. And that starts with really why you got into business in the first place needs to mean something when you talk about your business. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I met with someone who runs a PR agency and we were talking about branding. And as she was getting coffee, I took a look at a bunch of PR websites and hers. And when she came back, I said, I looked at five PR websites and the message that I got first glance was, we are a PR agency. We'll get your word out. And she said, okay. And I said, then I went to yours and guess what it said? And she just said, oh no. I said, yeah, it pretty much says we're a PR agency and we'll get your word out. But in talking with her in 20 minutes, I learned that in college, she was well known to all her friends to get people out of writer's block when it came to writing essays. She just knew how to grab the words and get the point across. So we talked about that for a few minutes and she had a lot of passion there. It really was why she got into her business. Where we netted out was something that doesn't say I'm a PR agency and I get your word out. It now says every business gets writer's block will help you find the right words. And it becomes a very simple translation of from PR agency, one of many, to PR agency, one in many, be one of all of those that people will remember. Because ultimately it comes down to how the consumer receives your brand story and what you're all about. That is such a great example of transforming the thing that she is passionate about the thing that got her into business and using that not just as a point of difference, you know, look at me, I like red and everybody else likes blue, but using that and making that point of difference relevant to her customers. Exactly. And that's the beauty of it. If we step back as small businesses and we think about why we got into business, nobody who ever tells me they did it to make money will ever get a phone call back from me 
because I don't believe it. You would have to be nuts to get into business without really having a belief or a passion that you feel important enough to share. But what ends up happening to the businesses is they have 100% of a phenomenal idea that they want to share. And the second they decide to start a business, it starts to, to whittle away at that 100%. And you mm-hmm. start doing things like, I need a website, I need an email address, et cetera, et cetera. So by the end of all of this, your passion for why you started out doing it is being dictated by how you think you're supposed to run the business. I ask people right away, you need to start with what you say to somebody on an elevator. And that cannot be a one-way conversation. It needs to be about, okay, I am not just a marketing firm. I am not just a mechanic. I am not just a plumber. Because if you say to somebody, what do you do? And your response is, I'm a plumber or I'm a, I'm in marketing. They say, okay. And it just kind of goes by. But if somebody were to ask me what I do on an elevator before they even hit a button, I'm thinking of it as how long can I keep them on the elevator with my (laughs) so the first 10 seconds is connection i believe that if you are connected the right way quickly and you catch the okay tell me more attitude that you want to elicit from that person they are going to stay on the elevator and keep listening to you and ultimately that's what you want because our stories are not just 10 seconds but unfortunately we have to get people to read the book in 10 seconds So I talk to people about their elevator pitch in the environment of an elevator, understanding that when they get on the elevator and they ask you what you do, they're going to wait to push a button until you answer. And the higher up they push, the more interested they are in your store. If they hit floor one or two, they want out. If they hit the penthouse or better yet, every floor all the way up so it takes longer, you know you've got. And when you can capture someone talking about your business in that way, it quickly informs everything that you do from a product and marketing standpoint. And it keeps you focused on what that 100% of an idea was when you jumped into this business in the first place. So I work with companies to make sure they understand why they're really here and what they really believe. And at the very beginning, we align on a way to talk about their business. There's no research. There's no qualitative, quantitative. It's not we're trying to pick the words. We find something that they believe in and a way to talk about it that's meaningful to them and will be meaningful to their consumer, the way a consumer talks. It's a wonderful way for them to define how they talk to their consumer. It defines the marketing avenues they choose, and it takes them from this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy of a shotgun approach to something that's closer to a drone strike, precision, laser-guided message. And that is ultimately, it starts with, so what do you do? And, you know, you hit something there that I think is really interesting. It's this idea of that laser focus, that drone strike. And in order to do that, you have to say something that isn't plain vanilla, which means some people are going to connect with it and some people aren't. And you have to be okay with that. I absolutely subscribe to that theory. There are people that are going to bristle at my approach. There are people that are going to wonder what the hell I'm talking about when something comes out of my mouth. And I, by nature, am a talker. I am an influencer. That's that's my personality. I can't change it. But when people start hearing me talk about what I do and they hear the passion coming through, it's just you want to feel excited about what you're doing. And when you land on it, that becomes a really valuable tool for you, if that makes sense. It absolutely is. And I think you have credibility in an authenticity in a way that you don't have when you're sort of trying to say what everybody else says. You know, I'm a digital marketing agency, blah, 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 blah. Right. But when I can talk about the fact that fundamentally I want to give business owners control over their marketing and I want to give them tools and techniques that will let them do that, not everybody wants that. Some people want a, oh no, just, you know, go do it, leave me alone. And that's okay. Yeah. We're not the right fit. So being comfortable with that idea, I think is really important that you can define who you are. And as you say, tell it in a way that piques somebody's curiosity and piques the right person's curiosity. Yeah. I mean, to take the idea even further, there's, you really only have two assets that you have in your, your bailiwick, your, your quiver that you have control over. One of them is a constant. 
And that's your personality and it's who you are. Even how you talk about your business, how you write about your business, how you advertise your business should not be contrary to how you think. Mm -hmm. And if you have a personality that's strong in a, I'm very extroverted and I, I'm more of an orator than I am a listener. But if I'm writing in a way that accountants write or people in finance write, it's not going to be authentic. So yeah. your personality really has to influence how you communicate. You need to, people talk about public speaking and say, you know, I need to play this role. I need to do this. I need to do this. I said, when have you ever felt awkward having a conversation with another human being where you felt like you needed to become someone else? It's just because you're in business and because you're in front of an audience that you even have that notion. So being yourself and playing to your strengths just in your personality is important for your business. But the other one, and this is the one that you're talking about, is a variable. The only thing that you can control, and it's your attitude. It's how yeah. you project your reaction to something or your intake of something. And I can walk down the street and project, don't talk to me. I can walk mm -hmm. down the street and project everybody talk to me. I tried it out when I was in the corporate world to make sure I understood what I can do with my attitude. And it looked like this. I walk down a hall and the same woman that I see all the time, we do the same social thing like, hi, how are you? And you can picture it, the hi with the tight smile, almost apologetic, but it's a social utility. One day I decided instead of keeping going, I stopped dead. I turned and faced her. I said, Nikki, I couldn't be better if there were two of me. Today is the best day of my life. How are you? And her reaction was her eyes widened, her jaw dropped, and she physically moved away from. Like I was, my projection of my positivity sent her on her way with her head up high. The next day, she immediately assumes I'm going to be engaging. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh, not a great day, Nikki. Hope you're doing better than me. And I kept walking. And I glanced over my shoulder and I saw her head down and she was slumped. My attitude had a physical effect on that person. We all can do that within small business, understanding what attitude we need to project to be connectable with our consumer. So my elevator pitch, I solve problems that plague every small business and growing business, whether they think they are or not. They have problems. I solve them. That's what I tell people in an elevator. Awesome. Mike, that was great. Thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you for having me. This is an absolute delight. Mike, we're going to have a link to your website, and I'm going to encourage folks to drop by and learn more about you and see kind of what you're up to and see how your personality plays out on your website. Thank you so much, Lorraine. It's so much fun being on, and thanks for having me. If you've enjoyed today's conversation, if you're looking for more information for small businesses, be sure to check out the resources of the Digital Toolbox at digital tool